I'm Steve Solis. Thanks for being here. The first coastal storm of the season drew in crowds to Westport in Grays Harbor County today. Video from the Como Ford drone shows conditions as the wind and waves picked up. All the waves draw excitement for people watching ashore. The National Weather Service is forecasting seas of 20 to 22 feet offshore, which can produce dangerous currents and bar conditions. The Coast Guard urges people to use caution if they head out to local beaches. It also urges mariners to make sure their vessels, either anchored or moored, can hold in strong winds or seas. It's all to avoid scenes like this one last month, when the Coast Guard air crew from North Bend rescued a man after his boat became disabled and capsized off of Waldport, Oregon. Or this one last year, when crews rescued five people from a tugboat after a search and rescue mission off La Push after that vessel lost steering. There are a lot of questions when it comes to the stormy autumn season here in the Pacific Northwest, and tonight, we want to bring in the answers. That brings us to our Ask Shannon segment. Chief Meteorologist Shannon O'Donnell joins me tonight to talk a little bit more about this term we keep talking about, Shannon, atmospheric river. You probably heard it quite a bit. Yes, absolutely. I have strong feelings about this term. Okay. Just to explain where it comes from and what it is, let's dive in and see what on earth it means. Well, here's a view we're all familiar with here in the Northwest. That is Snoqualmie Falls. Right. But it is Snoqualmie Falls when it is a ripping and roaring, mm -hmm. when it's had a lot of extra rainfall and often snow melt in the mix too. And that leads to river flooding. And every time it happens, the culprit, an atmospheric river. Okay. So it's essentially just like a river up in the sky, a really strong, narrow band of precipitation that's really focused on one area. It hits the west coast, and in our case, the northwest coast, which is really mountainous. As it does so, it's forced to go up, okay. has to go up over the Olympics, and the Olympics just act like they're squeezing out a sponge and they just pull all of this rain out. So do the Cascades on the other side. So you get this topographical action, just it's called orographic lift. It pulls all of that rain out from the atmospheric river and ends up just drenching everything down below. Now, atmospheric rivers, they are very effective in transporting a ton of water vapor over sometimes thousands of miles across the Pacific, oh, just wow. like a big train in the sky. And they're especially problematic when they're rooted in the subtropics. They're not always rooted there, but that's when we end up with our big problems around here. Okay, well, we have a lot of viewers who have questions about these atmospheric rivers as well. So Sally wants to know, how do you know in advance that we will have this river? Okay, good question. You know, I love talking about all the technology, having done this for 30 plus years and seeing how things have advanced and changed and how great the models are and you know 20 especially 30 years ago we couldn't necessarily see this but this is what model data looks like now wow. and right away even to you I'm sure you can see right where that train of water vapor is how it's pushing towards Seattle how in this case in this particular case and they're all different yeah. it's rooted right down there near the Hawaiian Islands so that right there is an atmospheric river when we see that narrow plume of moisture that's just really focused and con concentrated like that extending all the way deep down to about 20 degrees north and pumping in our direction you know, we are definitely focused on that. We know that an atmospheric river is on the way. Okay. Yeah, that really does help. Even somebody like me who doesn't yeah. look at those ever. Yeah. That was pretty you clear can there. Pick it out pretty easily, right? All right. So Anna wants to know how do you know when these will be dangerous or destructive? Yep. Yeah, good question. Well, they're graded first of all by the center in San Diego, and let me show you this that I, I put out often when we have an atmospheric river, right. just to help people understand the distinction between the different types. So this is one of my old tweets that kind of goes semi-viral whenever we have one of these and we have a really intense version. Um, I use the analogy, not all bourbon is whiskey, but all whiskey is bourbon. Okay. Similarly, atmospheric rivers come in all shapes and sizes. And the ones we really worry about are the Pineapple Express variety. Okay. So there are lots of atmospheric rivers, but the Pineapple Express variety, that's the term we used to really use in the 90s. Uh, they tend to get rooted all the way in the subtropics, all the way toward the Hawaiian Islands. Mm -hmm. And they're especially problematic if we're deep into January. We've had a ton of mountain snow. We've got that beautiful snow pack up in the Cascades in the Olympics. And then all of a sudden we get the old Pineapple Express on top of it. It can bring temperatures up into the 60s. It pours in the lowlands. 
importantly, it pours up in the passes and all the way sometimes up to 10, 11,000 feet up in the Cascades. Yeah. So you've got rain down below, you've got rain up above, oh, no. and you have mountain snow that is just melting like crazy and all coming, tumbling down. Right. That's when you see Snoqualmie Falls just roaring like we saw in that initial picture. And that is where the atmospheric rivers can get really destructive. We've had rounds like that where we've had I-5 near the Chehalis River Valley underwater and closed wow. because we've had such extensive flooding. This atmospheric river, by comparison, coming in tomorrow, pretty weak okay. compared to that. Good to know. That yep. was my next question. All right, Chris wants to know, are atmospheric rivers comparable to systems that form hurricanes? Okay, good question. So if you look at this picture, it might be semi-familiar to you because this was the old bomb cyclone, another term yeah. that has really taken off thanks to social media in recent years. And I want to remind everybody that terms like bomb cyclones, uh, heat domes and atmospheric rivers, they were always part of the lexicon within the confines of academia. Mm -hmm. And thanks to social media and just a lot of sharing, they have spread. And sometimes they become a little bit larger than life and people yeah. think every last storm is an atmospheric river or a heat dome or, yeah. you know, the sky is falling. And these are normal. This is how we've always gotten. We need rain. We're yeah. supposed to be stormy here in late October. But here's the bomb cyclone. That To get back to the original question here sent in, that was more like a hurricane in the terms of the winds. We had terrible gusty right. winds and you can see the structure all wrapped around like a big donut there. We don't have the heat that you need to support a hurricane, but this is about as close as it's gonna get when we have a bomb cyclone. Okay. Now, when you wind that up, think of like one of those tape measures that come out and then you hit the button and it all pulls in really quickly. Yeah. That is kind of what this looks like here. And the deeper the area of low pressure, the more it's gonna be able to pull all of that moisture in from the subtropics and create a big atmospheric river. So last year when this was happening, we got the bomb cyclone part, yeah. but down there you can see the beginning of that atmospheric river that it was pulling in from the Hawaiian Islands. That was focused to our south in Oregon and California, right. so they just got oh, drenched to yeah. kingdom come there. So we had the bomb cyclone. That was similar to a hurricane. Very, very strong, very deep. I'd say that's the feature that is more similar to a hurricane. Okay. Listen, Casey, is a very important question because mm -hmm. really I want to know this too. How long will this atmospheric river last? Will it continue into Halloween? Well, that would be a very long time, you know, over a week, Friday to Friday, right? Yeah. So just a quick peek at the forecast from earlier today. That looks terribly wet, right? Yes, that's it the does. five day forecast. But the atmospheric river part is Friday. So yeah. that's the stream of steady moisture. Tomorrow will be wet from start to finish especially as we finish on Friday afternoon. Okay. Saturday and Sunday, they're more showery, more hit and miss. We're between storms. We've got a few more plumes of moisture coming through. Monday, actually not half bad. And then Tuesday, another storm. To answer the question, no, it's not the same storm. It's not the same atmospheric river. Sometimes you get an atmospheric river that lasts maybe two, three days. Right. That is just really intensely focused on us. That would be the extreme. They're never going to hang out for, you'd be in big trouble if an atmospheric river was in one spot for seven, eight days in a row. Okay. Absolutely inundated. But I've seen them, you know, hang on 36, 48 hours around here. Uh, still can be pretty problematic when that happens. Okay. Casey, you're just going to have to check the forecast. Like, <laughs> yep. Every day leading up to the yep. Halloween. Halloween, you know, I would just count on it being wet for now, but it's yeah. not be, going to be because of this storm. Okay. All right. And Lori wants to know, are these atmospheric rivers getting more frequent and severe due to global warming melting glacial ice? Right. Uh, you know, great question. Lots of unanswered questions like that in meteorology. We do a lot of modeling trying to get to the bottom of that. All of the studies that most meteorologists are in some agreement about are that the more extreme weather is rooted in climate change and what we're doing as humans to change our environment. Nothing conclusive, but we can see that we're warming the planet, certainly. Yeah. And most of the modeling associated with that, and it can be questionable. You get one little part of the model wrong and it can change things 100, 200 years in the future, but it points to more extreme weather happening, bigger heat domes, rounds of extreme weather yeah. like atmospheric rivers and bomb cyclones and, you know, just really stormy days. But that really does remain to be seen. Inconclusive at this point, models generally point in that direction. Okay. Shannon, always a treat. Thanks yeah, for being with so us. so much fun. Absolutely. Okay, so that's going to bring us to tonight's Pulse Poll. You can vote now by scanning the code here on your screen. So we want to know, how prepared are you for a big storm? Right now, 44% of you say you're very prepared. 41% of you say you're somewhat prepared, and 15% of you say you're not prepared at all. If you want to vote, just scan the code here on your screen.